Hey Hardtail fans, we have a prototype bike that I can't wait to show you. This is the Priority Bike 600 HXT. It's a very early prototype. It's still kind of half-baked, but they wanted to get this out to us so we could get some eyeballs on it in preparation for the actual version to launch. It comes with a charger, but it's not an e-bike. This thing's got some really cool stuff going on. First of all, you'll notice pinion drive, Gates carbon belt drive, but this has a trigger shifter and listen, it's an electronic shifter. A lot of people have been asking for trigger shifters on their pinions. This has the brand new pinion smart shift, which is an electronic, not wireless, but electronic shifting technology. The idea is that it can shift even better under load than the old grip shift version and it's a trigger shifter. But you do have a cable coming from it, so it's not completely wireless like you've come to expect from SRAM. But this is really, really big news, and this is a really big deal in the pinion world. Pinion technology is exciting, but many of the hardtails it's found on are not exciting hardtails because of their geometry. But the 600 HXT has modern trail geometry. On paper, at least, this has the type of geometry that I like on my modern trail bike. A little while ago, we reviewed the 600X, Ryan Van Duzer signature bike, which was a great upright, comfortable, big front triangle, bike packing, leisure touring bike. But through that whole review, I was just saying, man, I wonder what it'd be like to have pinion on a modern geometry bike. And that's what this HXT is. The 600 moniker in the name of the bike is the 600% gear ratios that it has inside of the pinion. The HXT has the smart shift technology. Now this is a prototype and it's like 90% baked, but the bikes that you're able to buy will have a few changes. They'll have some greater tire clearance. They claim up to a 2.6. I'm not gonna test because the frame's gonna change from this prototype to the production model. There's also a couple little tweaks, like there's going to be an electronic charging cable up here on this very early prototype. I have to pull the seat out to charge it. That's just what happens when we're trying to get the first smart shift on the market out. And so I'm so glad to have it. I'm so grateful for Priority. And I'm grateful that they got me this prototype way before the production model with the understanding that everything's not gonna be perfect on this. And that's how prototypes are. They're meant to test stuff out and see what works and what doesn't so they can make tweaks before it goes into production. So A, I'm glad to see companies are prototyping, not all companies do. And B, I'm honored that Priority would send me one of these. It's, it's a true honor to have this in the stand today. If you're new to Pinion, I've got some other videos on the channel that, that describe it in more detail. But basically the idea is with this Pinion, it's a gearbox, it's a transmission like a car transmission. And it has gears inside of there rotating at any given time. You can shift without, sh without pedaling. I just shifted three. You can shift while pedaling backwards. You can shift while pedaling. It's a 12 speed drivetrain and it's a very wide range, wider range than anything else on the market right now for mountain bikes. There are some really cool advantages about this. Number one, it carries all the weight down low. Number two, in theory, it's very low maintenance. I've never owned a pinion bike, so I can't verify the maintenance claims, but the claim is that once a year you drain the oil and replace the oil and that's it. And because it's got a belt, oftentimes you won't need to lube it. I do get the belts to squeak with our dust here, so I do have to lube them a little bit. But for most people, you can just hose it off. You won't need to lube it up. It's a very clean system, very maintenance-free system. Now, with the old pinions that are not electronic, the cables stretch over time. And, and after a couple years, there's a chance you may need to re replace the cables on it. With the smart shift, it's all electronic, so you don't have any cables that are going to stretch. Now, a lot of people are wondering, is the smart shift backwards compatible? And can I put smart shift on my old pinion or convert this to cable shift? No, they are not compatible, unfortunately. And this bike is designed only for smart shift. You're not going to be able to get the 600 HXT with traditional non-electronic grip shift technology. So I'm not going to throw this on the geometer either, just in case something changes between this prototype and the production model. But GeoChart Online says 65 degree head angle, 140 mil fork, 447 reach on a size medium, right where I like to see it, 439 mil chainstay. Now, Priority's done some really interesting stuff to get that chainstay as short as they want. They know we like short chainstays. And many other hardtails with a pinion have super long chainstays. So what Priority's done is they've clocked it and rotated it to move it out of the way of the tire. 
and they've also machined off some parts of the pinion to get it even more tucked in there. So it's as tucked in as it's gonna get and bravo to Priority for doing that. I think it's cool that they were willing to think outside the box. That's something that I would want to do as a mad scientist myself. I'd be like, hey, is, can we remove any material? Can we rotate it? And there aren't gonna be any issues with oiling or anything like that with the way that they've modified that. So way to go Priority, I love seeing that. The geometry is very exciting for me for opinion. Stack on paper looks pretty low, but it'll be interesting to see if that stack is accurate or not. It didn't feel low when I threw a leg over it. Uh, it comes with 170 mil cranks. That's probably one thing I would love to change. I don't even know if Pinion makes 165 or 160 mil cranks. That would be fascinating to find out. Total weight came in at 34 pounds even with these pedals. Pinions are not lightweight. There are so many forces and so much stress at work under here. You're, you're pedaling and shifting and a lot of times under load. And those are hardened steel parts to make sure they're robust and maintenance free for you. So Opinion is technically heavier than like a SRAM GX Eagle. But one thing that's really nice about it is it's located all the weight, all the mass into the center lowest point of the bike. So the rear end is far lighter. And if you have a full suspension, that means less unsprung mass. So when you hit a bump and the full suspension moves, there's less weight to move. Imagine hanging a two pound weight off your axle that every time you hit a bump, it had to lift that. You can usually feel that. I'm excited to try that and see if I can feel that lighter rear end. Anytime I run single speed, that's what I notice. I don't just notice that the bike is lighter. I notice that there's way less weight hanging off the rear axle. So little wheel lifts or bunny hops or moving the bike around, it's just so much easier when the center of mass is in the center of the bike. Priority has an interesting theory as to how to measure sizing for your bike. And it's standing over the top tube and measuring how much extra space you've got, comparing your inseam to the standover. That doesn't really work for me because I have such short legs, I don't even fit a size small. I can't even straddle a size small but I like the reach of a size medium. So I've got a medium here. I'm five foot six. I only have a 28 inch inseam, so I can't even straddle a 29 wheel and keep my feet on the ground. So according to priority sizing, I should be on an extra small, which doesn't exist. But I think this is gonna work out well for me. I may have to shim down the dropper a little bit. This has a 410 seat tube. Might, might need to shift that a little bit. So personally, I like to size off of the geometry and the reach more than the standover. But I do think a lot of priorities tips are gonna help people with sizing. Just remember that height or inseam isn't the only way to size a bike. That only tells part of the story. It doesn't tell you how far away the bars are gonna be when seated or when standing, and that's pretty important. So I went with the size medium. We'll see if that was a mistake or not. Last time I kind of sized up on priority and I didn't, didn't like it, I should have listened to them. We'll see if that's the case here as well when I take it out for a review ride. I love the paint job. I think they did a fantastic job at it. One thing I wish they would change, I wish they'd machined off the paint or powder coat where the sliders are. The As I tighten the bolts to tighten the wheel and snug it down, the powder coat underneath is cracking a little bit. And I'd like to see that kind of machine so it's just raw aluminum so that those bolts just clamp on raw aluminum and they aren't clamping powder coat or paint. I think this is powder coat. But man, just a sleek, cool looking bike. I thought they integrated the pinion really, really well. Now, it's obvious that this bike was meant to be photographed from that side, from the drive side. It shows off the belt, it shows off the pinion, it shows off the lack of cassette, but it doesn't show the cable routing very well. So I'm going to flip this around so we can look at the cable routing. Now here we can see the routing. Typically, I prefer my dropper lever on the other side so it crosses the head badge. Some people like it all in one spot, but if I were to change something, that's what I would change. I'd put the dropper port on the other side and get it to cross the head tube. Just looks a little bit, just a little bit cluttered here. Um, kind of weird. This is the smart shift electric shifter cable going in. And then it actually comes out down here out of the smart shift port into the smart shift. Now, one thing about the smart shift is it doesn't just have electronic shifting, but it has a motor that can force the shifting better than we could do with the old grip shift one. So opinion and priority claim that you can shift under load a lot better with this system. I'm excited to try that out. This is the dropper routing, a little bit weird. I would, I don't know how I would change that, but it just kind of, I don't know, doesn't, it doesn't sit very well. It'd be cool if there was a way to like run it under here and keep it all internal. 
I don't know if that's an option or not. Kind of kind of funky there on that. And yeah, we just got brake in here, shifter in here, dropper in here. So a little bit different. It looks clean when you're photographing it from the drive side. And we do see a lot of bikes designed that way to look clean in the photos. And then when you get on it and see the other side, you realize, uh, it's okay. But there's a couple things that could be a little bit cleaner. Still, they've got some cool stuff. A three pack up top, two pack on the bottom, a three pack inside the frame. So you could still get custom bags made for this if you like a strapless mount. I think this looks cool the way they've done the tubes. A lot of people try to get the biggest front triangle possible. And honestly, the amount of square footage you lose here is very minimal. So I'm not worried at all, even if I were to bike pack with this. Internal brake routing for the front and then external for the rear. Looking good. I, this looks like that might be for a kickstand. I don't know if that's going to be on the production model or not. We've got an aluminum frame. We've got a 140 mil Fox Rhythm 34. I love that for trail riding. We've got race face stem, salsa bars, TRP slate Evo brakes, WTB KOM wheels. We got a one up dropper. One up droppers have the lowest stack of any other dropper. So you can often run about 20 mil longer dropper than you could in any other brand. That means your saddle gets out of the way even more. And for a rowdy hardtail, I love seeing that. One up droppers also have travel adjust. So if you could fit a 170 but not a 180, you could lower this down 10 mil. Really, really cool to see. And the MSRP for this bike is 3999 Now that's a lot of money for a hardtail if you're not used to shopping for pinions, but to have a pinion hardtail for that price is pretty impressive, especially with this modern geometry. So I'm actually really excited about that. Another thing I really like are the ergonomics of this smart shift. It's got a little bit of noise. I don't mind that. And the battery is good for 10,000 shifts or 1,000 hours of riding. I don't know how long it takes you to ride a thousand hours. It takes me a very long time, especially on one bike. I've got so many bikes, I'm always rotating through. My prototype doesn't quite last that long. This is an early version of Smart Shift. I've got a little kink, couple kinks that they're working out, but when the production model drops, you're gonna get 10,000 shifts. It sounds like we're probably only gonna have to charge us once or twice a year. That's like less frequent than you need to change the sealant in your tire. So. Maybe every time you change your sealant, you also charge the battery to your Pinion Smart Shift. Now it's good for 10,000 shifts and it only uses the battery when you're shifting. And the battery is charged on the bike. The battery's in here, you don't pull it out, you don't carry spare batteries with you. You just charge it overnight before your sealant swap. And then the next day it's all charged, ready to go for another four to six months, depending on how much you ride. That's impressive. And so I think that's gonna take away a lot of the fear of an electronic, battery operated drivetrain as long as it proves to be reliable. Now a lot like SRAM transmission, pinion times the shift for your power stroke and where the crank is and the spindle in its rotation. So there are some shifts that I noticed already even on the stand that delay just a second to wait till it's all lined up for proper meshing of the gears. If the claims are true about number of shifts on charge and all of that, I have zero worries about the electronic nature of this. Now it's hard to criticize something that's brand new and just coming out. Nobody else is making gearboxes is like this. Nobody is, is doing this sort of thing. And so to compare it with technology that's 30, 40, 50, 100 years old, like regular derailers, doesn't seem very fair. What would I love to see on the next version? Oh man, it feels dirty even saying that because this hasn't even hit production yet. I would love to see a wireless version of this that doesn't have to run a cable down there. I think that'd be pretty cool unless it hurts durability or hurts battery life or something like that. I'll bet they could make it work though. Probably like a coin battery, like something like Axis. One less cable, one less thing to route. You could keep this all sealed up. I'm sure the pinion nerds are thinking about that. One other really cool thing they've done is they spec a 180 mil one-up dropper. I'm excited to see the production model of this. This, like I said, is the prototype. There's some little rough spots, but that's okay. That's what prototypes are supposed to do. So many companies, rush production and skip the prototyping and their version one is the prototype. Then you have to wait two or three years for them to sell out of all those frames. Then they take what they learned from that, hopefully for version two and improve it then. Bravo priority for prototyping first and getting a few kinks out early 
to fix in production. I am so excited for this thing. This smart shift technology really intrigues me. And if those battery life claims are true, that is truly impressive and it takes away any anxiety I have about electronics in my drivetrain. My hopes are that this will still be a low maintenance or almost zero maintenance system where you charge your batteries about as often as you refresh your sealant or change your tires. That is seriously impressive. Oil changes every 6,000 miles and away you go. Super impressed priority, way to go. Nobody else is doing this with modern hardtail geometry that don't have chain stays a mile long. Can't wait to get this thing on the trail. If you're interested in seeing that, make sure you're subscribed. What's your favorite feature? What worries you? What would you change if you were the designer? Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.